success, ladies and gentlemen. Success is not a point. Success is a path. And on that path, there are many different events that take place, some more significant than others. Now, as an Irishman, I feel compelled to tell you stories. And this first particular story is about transformation, because you see, I believe that every organization today is on a path of transformation. This story talks about the three stages of transformation. And like all great stories, it begins with a camel. And this, as you can clearly see, is a camel. They look like this in Ireland. Now, a camel, a camel is a creature that you tell them what to do. You train them, you teach them. They carry a weight, a weight of education, a weight of culture. However, at a certain stage in the camel's development, it moves forward, it moves into a desert. And when it is within that desert, suddenly another transformation takes place and it becomes a lion. This, as you can clearly see, is a lion. A lion has a character, has an identity, has a personality and an ego. Now, on maturity, that lion then moves further into the desert until it meets in the desert a dragon. It is remarkable how dragons and lions and camels have the same DNA in Ireland. So, it meets a dragon. The lion meets a dragon. And a great battle takes place between this lion and this dragon. Now, if the dragon wins, the lion becomes the camel again. If, however, the lion wins, it leaves the desert and becomes a child. A child is innocent, a child is fresh, a child understands that imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, before you go into a deeper state of learning, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Irish logic. Now, this here, as you can clearly see, is Patrick Murphy. Now, Patrick Murphy, the average Irish man, he goes out and on Monday night he has 10 whiskeys and a cola. So on Tuesday morning he wakes up with a terrible hangover. Okay, so on Tuesday night he goes out and he has 10 vodkas and a cola. Wednesday morning wakes up, terrible hangover. Wednesday night he goes out and he has 10 rums and a cola. Thursday morning, terrible hangover, and he says, that's it, no more cola for me. Absolutely logical. It is the cola, obviously, that is the common denominator. Now, we can laugh at this, and yet all too often in businesses, we're focusing on what is obvious as opposed to what is hidden. Now, from one culture, island culture, to another island culture, this story, I'd like to tell you, really drives the work that I do with organizations. It's as follows. There's a community in the South Pacific Islands that bring the whole community together every period of time. All of the men come together, all of the women come together, all of the children come together for a specific task. Every number of years they come together to build a boat. The whole community is brought together. Men have a specific task, women have a specific task, the children are involved in everything. And the oldest person in the village, whether it's a man or a woman, they have a special task. And their task is to sit in the center of the village and light a fire. And they have to sit by the fire and keep the fire burning and remember why they are building the boat. 
If there is a dispute, they go back and they consult. If there's a loss of direction, they go back and they consult. This fire is the fire that I believe burns at the heart of every great organization. And I call it the soul of the organization. The work that I do with organizations is help them find their soul. You do not create a soul, you find it. Now, all of this might be fine and there's challenges. One of the challenges is as follows. This, as you can clearly see, is a forest. And in this forest, there's an Irish guy walking with his Dutch friend. <laughs> and, what are you laughing at? It's such an easy joke to make. So they're walking along in the forest, and suddenly, out from behind a tree, jumps a bear. A bear. Right? Now, the bear starts running towards him. The Irish guy's freaking out, freaking out. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The Dutchman's very, very calm. Takes out his backpack. Out from his backpack, he starts putting on a pair of running shoes. And the Irish guy says, what are you doing? What are you doing? We can't outrun a bear. And the Dutch man says, we don't need to outrun the bear. I just need to outrun you. <laughs> now, <laughs> we, we, we can exchange nationalities very easily here. Now, the challenge with this, ladies and gentlemen, is the following, that most of the models that we use in today's society is built on this limiting frame of competition. Limiting frame. When Darwin spoke about competition and survival of the fittest, he spoke about it within a greater context of cooperation. One of the directions that I encourage organizations to move towards is that direction of cooperation. Now, just like there's Irish logic, there's Irish mathematics as well. And they are as follows. This is where one plus one equals one. This is one plus one equals two. This is one plus one equals three. And where we are today? In our interconnected world, where technology allows us to add one plus one plus one, 111. We are now in an interconnected world where it is no longer just synergy that is leading us. We are actually in exponential growth. <laughs> Collaboration is the key. Now, one of the things that I would just like to give you an insight into where I believe the answers are, I believe they're somewhere in the relationship between these two things. This word here, economy and ecology. I've always been intrigued by the relationship between these two words. And, of course, you can see that they have the same root. Eco. Eco, in this case, refers to household. Household. Eco refers to household. Economy, household, management. Ecology, household, knowledge. How can we manage without knowledge? Surely the answers lie somewhere within this space. So, This is an insight into what I believe 
can be a direction for paradigm shifts in our future. The collective generation of knowledge. This point here, A, and this point here, B, and this point here, C, is only created with the combination of three people. It is not found in a, in a conversation of two. Rather, it comes from the conversation of three. The, co the collective generation of knowledge. There's a lot that I can say on that. And I want to begin by talking about nature giving us again insights. Now, this, as you can clearly see, is a cell. Now, this is the nucleus of the cell. And nature used to tell us that it was the nucleus of the cell that was the most important part of the cell. They used to say that that was the most intelligent part of the cell. Yet what they have discovered these days is that it is actually the skin, the membrane of the cell that is the most intelligent part. Because it is the skin that decides what should go in or what should stay out. We are now transforming into a new world here. We're, lose, we're leaving behind the concept of the camel and we're now entering into the world of the line. What's happening with this is that if this is the board of an organization, what is that? These are questions that redefine leadership. And one of my favorite stories about leadership, like all great stories of leadership, involve parrots. Now, this, as you can clearly see, is an Irish parrot. This is another parrot, and this is a, another parrot. Now, an Irish guy goes into the bar, behind the bar are three parrots. And he says to the barman, what's with the parrots? And the barman says, ah, well, they're for sale. For sale? How much is the first parrot? The barman says, well, it's 2,000 euros for the first parrot. He says, well, what does he do? He says, well, he talks. And sure enough, the parrot talks. It's a slight Irish accent, but, you know, he's talking. And he says, well, how much is it for the second parrot? And he says, ah, well, that's 3,000 euros. 3,000 euros. What does he do? Well, he talks and he dances. It's the universal symbol for dance. So how much is it for the third parrot? The third parrot is 5,000 5, euros. What does he do? The barman says, I don't know, but the other two call him boss. <laughs> if you're not laughing at that joke, ladies and gentlemen, that paradigm of leadership models is being redefined towards the individual. The end of management, the beginning of a new paradigm of leadership. That is the world that we have moved towards. So, what does this mean? This means that the model that we used to use of an individual working in a top-down scenario has to change. It has to change. And we need to move into scenarios that are facilitated. We are moving away from the dictatorship and more into facilitation. These are new skills. It requires time for this transformation. And I believe that one of the skills in that transformation is to understand the difference between a part and a whole. The ability for an organization to understand the collection of parts and step away to see the whole. This is a key organizational skill. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge because of the following. We, as an individual, have a world model. This is the bubble of our world. This is the window of our world. And what happens is, this is the reality and by the time it's translated internally, this is what happens. We need to see the world not as we are, rather as the world is. This is perception management, one of the key skills. Now, 
there is hope. There's always hope. In the following story, if you get the molecule of carbon, you add it to the molecule of hydrogen, you add it to the molecule of oxygen, something unique is formed in the combination of these three things. And it's called sugar. With the right combination of these components, you get sugar. Literally, you create a sweet spot. Organizational collaboration, its goal is to create that. Oh, and by the way, you in the organization are not the sugar, no matter how sweet you are. You're the oxygen, one component. So, this brings us to our dragon. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Buddhist definition of work. Interesting. Let's look at this. The Buddhist definition of work. We must use and develop our capacities. This is the first thing we need to do. We need to use and develop our capacities. Interesting. The second thing we need to do is we need to engage in a common task. So we engage with others in a common task. And look at this. To reduce the ego. That is the goal of work. Wow. And what we do with that then is we create products and services for a becoming existence. What is a becoming existence? As I re-roll, you can hold in your mind the concept of a becoming existence. I'll give you a hint. So, to recap, the synergy creates sweet spots. We see the world in a new way where we understand the part from the whole and vice versa. We have the ability to be able to engage in a common task in order to reduce the ego. This creates new models of leadership. It creates new organizational structures. One of the keys to that organizational structure is the collective generation of knowledge. And I believe that whatever definition we're dealing with for the concept of becoming existence, it is found here between these two concepts of economy and ecology. That creates a new mathematics that moves us out of the limiting frame of competition into collaboration, where we will no longer be lost in the desert, but rather will have found a soul, which, after a long journey, brings us back to where we began. And we'll realize that the camel is actually asking us to use our capacities and develop our capacities. The line is asking us to engage in a common task where the battle is about the ego. When we overcome the ego, we transform into a child to make products plus services for a becoming existence. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a journey, and it is a journey home. As the great poet T.S. Eliot said, at the end of all of our searching, we shall find ourselves where we began and see it for the first time. Welcome home.